Welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, our staff, and all the people who will be helping leading us in worship today, we welcome you. We are so glad that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship on this beautiful day. Uh, we are continuing in our worship commitment and celebration series entitled 10 Sovereignty, Sabbath and Service, focusing in on the Ten Commandments as they call us to greater worship, greater simplicity, greater generosity and greater joy. It is also All Saints Day and we are giving thanks for all the saints today, which is the church right now and all who have gone before us and those who have, are yet to come, as well as remembering those in our church family who have died in the previous year. It is also our celebration of Holy Communion for all people. And so I want to encourage you to get together some bread or cracker or baked good, as well as some juice or some kind of other beverage so that you can join with us in our Holy Communion celebration for all people which will include our special All Saints Day celebrations as well. I want to encourage everyone who's joining with us in online worship to fill out your contact form that is pinned right in the comment section. There's a place there for you, of course, to put contact information so that we can connect with you, be in ministry with you, uh, be able to help you in any way in your life of faith. And there's also a place there for you to put your prayer concerns and a request that you have for our pastors and for our prayer team. You can use that contact form to put those and we will be praying for you. When we meet online for worship, we always covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we covenant to participate, that means that we're going to participate in the things that we're doing together online. So if it's time to stand up and sing, you go ahead and stand up and sing. If it's time to pray, go ahead and pray. We encourage you to turn off other distractions and devices and screens and really focus in. Maybe light a candle to help you focus, but let's fully participate together online in worship. And then we covenant to be a blessing as well. And that means that all that we do is a blessing to everyone that is participating and involved. Uh, if that's the people that you're with in your household right now while you're worshiping, in your comments online, to our greater community and to the world, we covenant to be a blessing. Now we also, when we gather together, always love to share the love and the peace of Jesus Christ with one another. I encourage you to do that right now with whoever you're gathered with. You can say the peace of Christ be with you and then respond and also with you. And we're going to be led in that right now by some very special saints of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Gene Brown. Peace be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Hi, I'm Tanya Kellis. Hi, I'm Karen Kellis. Hi, I'm Kevin. I like Fortnite. <laughs> Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. This is the church lady, Carol Heron. Peace be with you all.
Hannah Brown. I am an acolyte and I'm in children's choir. choir. Um, Hi, my name is Karen Brown and I'm a member of trustees, Lydia Circle, and also I sing in the praise band. Please join us with our opening prayer. Your line is, we are your people, oh God. Let's practice that saying, saying that together now. We, we are, are your, your people, people, oh God. God. In our weaknesses and strength. With our youth-filled spirits and bodies of all ages. We, we are, are your, your people, people, oh God. God. Strong in faith. Weak, weak in faith. Singing praise and whispering prayers. We, we are, are your people, people oh God. God. Filled with saintly, saintly determination. Yet mindful of our human limitations. We, we are, are your, your people, people, oh God. God. Made strong in your endless love for us. We know ourselves to be yours and we are, are your, your people, people, oh God. God. Good morning. Please join members of the Praise Band and me as we sing My Lighthouse. In my wrestling and in my doubt, in my failures you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, whoa. You are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, whoa. You are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining through the darkness. I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore.
It's time for small talk. Okay, kids, everybody get in close to your device, to your screen, so that you can see everything that happens here during small talk. This time it is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, as well as her very wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in really close so that you can see everything going on with small talk. Good morning, everybody. It is the day after Halloween, Sunday, November the 1st. Can you believe it? I hope everybody had a great, wonderful time trick-or-treating last night and wore wonderful costumes and got lots of candy. And Laud is late for our filming today because he also went trick-or-treating. Laud, come on, come on, buddy. Laud. Well, now that was unexpected, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Laud is still in his costume from last night, which was a squirrel. Laud is dressed as a squirrel. Yes. I know. I was not expecting. Like we talked about last week in Celebrate Wonder, sometimes the unexpected, like that, is good. We have to embrace that sometimes. But why are you still in your squirrel costume? Can you tell me? Mm-hmm. Oh, he thinks we like him better as a squirrel. No, we don't like you better as a squirrel, my sweet sheep. We like you just how you are. Yeah, that's just how you are. And we love you just like that. Same for you guys. We're gonna be talking about this week. We love you just how you are. God loves you just how you are. You don't have to wear silly costumes to make some of us like you better. Just be you. Like I said, we're gonna talk about that this week. So keep that in mind this week after Halloween. We love you and God loves you just how you are. Love you and miss you. Bye guys. Good morning, everybody. This is Mike Frakes, and I'm gonna be reading this morning's Bible verse. Our first reading in the Bible is from the fifth chapter of Deuteronomy, the 10 Commandments. I'll read for you the last six found in verses 16 through 21. Let's open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible readings. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you, so that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Thou shalt not murder, neither shall you commit adultery, neither shall you steal, neither shall you bear false witness against your neighbor, neither shall you covet your neighbor's wife, Neither shall you desire your neighbor's house or field or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hi, I'm Lori Payne Mullet and I'm a member here at Douglas. I'm on the SPRC and the board of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Our second reading of the Bible is from the many teachings and directions of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, found in the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. We are focusing in on verses 21 through 48. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or a sister, you will be liable to counsel. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who has looked at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven or by the earth. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. 
But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collector collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. During this series called 10, Sovereignty, Sabbath, and Service, we're hearing some wonderful testimonies from people in our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family on why they love and support Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And today we get to hear from Tom and Julie Crable. We are so proud to be a part of Douglas Methodist Church. A large reason for that is the expansive reach into our community that our smaller church has, thanks to the leadership and members of the church. Starting with Compass for Kids, Molly Barrent and the many volunteers have touched the lives of lots of area youth. Ellie and I have enjoyed bringing sand art and numerous other crafts to Compass. Wouldn't it be lovely? I'm so proud of this great organization that was started by Pastor Margaret Ann and the difference it has made in the women's lives. I've been fortunate to be able to serve on the board of directors and help with sales and other activities and have seen firsthand the difference that this uh, makes in the lives of the women it serves. The United Methodist Women, these circles do great things locally, nationally, and internationally, and have such a strong mission focus, and I'm glad to be a part of it. The micropantry at our church entrance is such a great food support to those struggling in our community. And Douglas is a wonderful partner with other organizations in the community, with Habitat for Humanity being a great example. We've been a strong supporter of a number of local builds providing housing for families in need. Current racial equality conversations are so important, and I am so proud that our church is actively involved in it. Missions have been strongly supported by our pastors, past and current, and all this wouldn't happen without so many passionate and dedicated volunteers that we have in our church. All of these outreach programs have touched many more lives than I would have imagined a church our size could. Our family has been very blessed to have been part of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church community for so many years. The Lord has given our family countless blessings. And as we reflect on his generosity, it is truly overwhelming. We cannot possibly repay him for all our gifts, but in a small way we can through our annual giving and service offerings. We ask that each of you reflect and pray on what God has given to you as you decide what to give back to him. God bless and thank you. Hi, I'm Alan Griffey. I sing in the praise band and I'm chair of Ad Council here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please stand and join us in Thy Word is a Lamp. Yeah. 
We're in our third week of Reflection with the Ten Commandments, exploring these life-giving instructions designed to guide and nurture us in all aspects of our lives, our relationship with God, with our family and friends, with our communities and all of creation, and our relation to and use of the abundant resources with which God has blessed us. I believe that you can group the Ten Commandments into three major themes, that of sovereignty, Sabbath, and service. And each week we're focusing in on one of these themes and taking up the challenge of ten spiritual practice to encourage us to live into sovereignty, Sabbath, and service. The first week we concentrated on the first three commandments that teach us God is sovereign, that our orientation for life in this world is God, first, last, and always, God. We confessed how difficult this can be for us and our struggles with idolatry. But the Ten Commandments show us in no uncertain terms that God is all of our life, that God is sovereign. God is God of all that we are, all that we have, and all that we do. All of our life, our work, our money, our vote, our school, our families, our play, all of it. Last week, we focused in on the command of Sabbath. Remember that the Sabbath day belongs to God. We confess that this commandment is probably the one we most flagrantly disregard. Sabbath. It's a time for worship, not working. Sabbath is rest for everyone and all of creation, remembering and honoring God with worship and resisting the violence of our life and lifestyles with simplicity, rejuvenation, reorientation, and reconnection. Honoring God's Sabbath is a spiritual practice that serves as a bridge. Sabbath practice helps us focus our life on the sovereignty of God, and Sabbath practice helps us live well with others. It promotes the health and well-being of others, and to live ethically with others, as outlined in the final six commandments. Sabbath practice is surely difficult for us 21st century folks. When filling our days and nights with work and media, it's too often the practice we follow and too often commanded and rewarded by our culture, economic systems, and politics. However, we had some ideas as a community about Sabbath, and here are just a few of those. Sabbath is the day I am released from my to-do list, and I'm called to not feel guilty about that. I am a human being, not just a human doing, someone shared. Sabbath is to worship and rest and not do any housework. Sabbath is time to set aside my screen and focus on the blessings and give thanks even in the midst of difficult times. Today, we're picking up the last six of the commandments that Mike shared with us from the book of Deuteronomy. These are the ones that you may uh, be able to most readily kind of rattle off as a list. Respect your father and mother. Do not murder. Be faithful in marriage. Do not steal. Do not tell lies about others. Do not want anything that belongs to someone else. These commandments are all about our relationship with others. Basically, they tell us how to live together without killing each other. They are very straightforward and are pretty easy to remember and seem like such just no-brainers. But I believe that's where we get into trouble with this final section of the Ten Commandments. We can kind of dismiss them as no-brainers. Recently, I was in conversation with some young people about these final six commandments, and these kinds of questions emerged. I haven't murdered anyone lately, but does my uh, pretty good or even affluent lifestyle or my personal choices to express what I see as my rights or liberty, do those contribute to the death of others in my community, nation, or somewhere else in the world? Do I really respect my parents? Do my actions toward them actually fall in line with that respect? Or do I treat them as people who are really less than? 
You know, I didn't rob a bank today, but I did steal someone's dignity through put-downs on social media or in person. This is what Jesus was getting at in our reading from Matthew that Lori shared with us. Jesus says, you have heard it said, do not murder, but if you are angry, you are liable to judgment. You have heard it said, do not commit adultery, but do not look at that other person with lust. Not an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth, but turn the other cheek. Not love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but love everyone, for everyone is your neighbor. Jesus says, be perfect in love as your heavenly Father is perfect. I believe what Jesus is getting at is this. If you simply attend to the letter of the law but not the principle, then you are not following the law at all. It's easy for us to just focus on the words of the commands and not think about the principle. Because when we do that, we can just forget about applying the principle into the reality of our lives, into the reality of our changing life situations. For example, I'm pretty sure I haven't coveted my neighbor's ox or donkey. But what does it mean not to covet what my neighbor has when every advertisement online, on TV, in print, when all of it is designed to make me want what others have? What does it mean not to lie? Does it mean to not distort the truth? What about telling a small truth in the middle of a large misdirection, like in many political advertisements? I didn't knock over a bank, but what does it mean not to steal if I'm seeking to exploit loopholes in the law in order to maximize my income or to not pay taxes? I didn't steal my neighbor's wallet over on the east side, but did I spend my money, my power, and influence manipulating the democratic process so that the laws give me an advantage and continue to privilege my wealth and my position? Elie Wiesel, the Nobel laureate survivor of the Holocaust, theologian, and author, sums up these final commandments in this way. Don't treat other people as objects. Treat them as people. Jesus, our teacher, our friend, son of God, son of humanity, and Savior sums it up this way. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. As I think about these basic commands that teach us fundamentally how we are to relate to one another, I truly believe the best way to think about them and to act on them is to offer ourselves in service to others. It's about caring for our neighbor as much as we care about ourselves. It's following Jesus' call to love our neighbors, all of them. It's following Jesus' call to live beyond the letter of the law and let love and service live as the principle within us that guides and steers all of our actions, all of them. To act in love and practical and meaningful ways, including the rights and the needs of others over our own to seek to live in perfect relationship with others, even as our Heavenly Father is perfect, and to apologize and seek forgiveness and to try again when we mess it all up. It's about love and service. Our challenge of 10 spiritual practice for this week is about service. In our first week, the challenge of 10 spiritual practice is to pray about the tithe or increase our giving by 10% as a way to work toward a tithe, as we reflect on God's sovereignty. Last week, our challenge of 10 spiritual practice for Sabbath is to use 10% less 
spend 10% less money, use less electricity or gas, eat 10% less meat, spend 10% less time working, 10% less time doing meaningless activity, 10% less screen time, 10% less time being out and about to cut your COVID exposure and the COVID exposure of others in the process. Today, we take up the challenge of 10 to turn our using 10% less on ourselves into 10% more for others. To increase our time in service to God by 10%. Maybe for you, that is to commit to worship and prayer each week online, or to help lead in children's ministries or an adult small group, or to make phone calls to help connect people, or to organize hospitality with our church family, or to advocate for affordable housing, to be a mentor, to volunteer with Compass for Kids, to get started on your work in anti-racism. There are so many ways and ideas and I encourage you to share those in the comments as they come to you. You've probably already identified at least one way you feel called to serve, but maybe you haven't taken the next step. Just take the next step this week. Remember, that's how spiritual practice works, right? We get started, we take the next step. Maybe it's a tiny step, but it's the next step, and we practice and it builds. And of course, we surround the whole thing in prayer. Our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family is doing just that, and it is such a vital part of this process. We need God's help, direction, grace, and mercy, and joining in relationship with God in prayer is key to that. Because first and foremost, God loves you. God loves me. God loves all of us and wants us to be in relationship in the healthy, life-giving ways that reflect how fearfully and wonderfully we have been created. As you consider your challenge of 10 service to use 10% more for others, I encourage you to use the prayer cards that you've received in the mail or use our online prayer card. The link will be right in the comment section. The prayer card is a way to commit and join in solidarity with our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family in this season. Let's pray now using our Challenge of Ten prayer. Holy God, thank you for your faithfulness, your love, and the life-giving direction you give us through the Ten Commandments. Help us to live fully in your sovereignty, Sabbath, and service. Help us to take the next steps to tithe our money, use 10% less resources, and give 10% more time to your service. Amen. Please join us in singing Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. As we are surrounded by the witness of the saints today, we are invited, like they have shown us, into lives of generosity. We are so grateful for the ways you have been generous with your financial giving to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, as well as your giving of time and love and prayer into all of these ministries. Thank you for that, and we encourage you to continue in that generosity. You can give your financial gifts using our online giving portal. The link for that is available in the comment section. It's also right on the webpage. You can give 
using automatic withdrawal through your financial institution and set that up. We can set up automatic withdrawal with you through our financial institution. And of course, you can send in checks right to the church office. All of your giving continues to be a proclamation of faith and love and joy and hope in this time. Thank you so much for that giving. I want to remind you, of course, to use your contact form if you have not already done so. That is also pinned in the comment section. And use the place there for your prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. And if you have not already done so, it would be time to bring your communion bread or crackers or baked good and your juice or beverage. Bring that in close to you as we'll be celebrating Holy Communion for all people on this All Saints Day in just a few moments. We're also going to receive a wonderful mission moment right now from Joe Johnson. Good morning, everyone. I'm Joe Johnson, and I am co-chair of the missions committee here at Douglas alongside my wife, Rebecca. However, I also work at St. John's Hospital here in town as part of the infection prevention team. And so this morning, I'm going to share a couple things we can do to both fulfill our call from Jesus to love and care for our neighbors as ourselves and to fulfill one of John Wesley's general rules of do no harm in this time of rising COVID-19 cases. So we are going to talk about the three W's that we practice to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The first W is watch your distance. It's important to physically distance yourself at least six feet when possible from others who are not part of your own household in both indoor and outdoor spaces when you can. The second W is wash your hands. It's very important to wash your hands with soap and water and good scrubbing for 20 seconds. Or if you're using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, make sure it has at least 60% alcohol in it. Now, good times for washing your hands are before, during, and after preparing food after you've been in a public space, after coughing or sneezing, and of course, after using the restroom. And I hope that's not the first time you've heard that. The third W is wear your mask. And when you wear your mask, you wanna make sure you have a nice snug fit on each side. You wanna make sure that it's covering both your nose and your mouth. And it's a good idea to wash your hands first before you put your mask on. I do want to point out that the CDC does not recommend children under the age of two wearing masks. So in summary, we're gonna practice our three W's of watch your distance, wash your hands, and wear your mask to help prevent the spread of COVID and take care of each other. That's all I have for today. Peace be with you. It's time for Holy Communion, and I am so honored to be joined here at our communion table by Nancy Vereen, who is our wonderful lay leader at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Good morning, everyone. I'm pleased to be with you. I hope that if you um, have your bread, your baked good, your cracker, that you bring that in close to you and your cup of juice or beverage, whatever you have, bring those things together so that we can enjoy the celebration of Holy Communion together. When we pray together at Jesus's table, we often celebrate the communion of saints, which includes not only all living believers, the church right now, but also all who have gone before us and those who are to come. When we share together in this communion meal, we experience the communion of saints, feasting with believers past, present, and future. The writer of Hebrews 12 reminds us that these saints, a great cloud of witnesses, surrounds us and cheers us on. Today, November 1st, is All Saints Day, when we especially celebrate the communion of saints and remember those in our church family who have died in the previous year and give thanks for those who have supported and influenced our faith. So as we come together at Jesus's table today, you are welcome here with your age, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, and all of your identities with your brokenness, healing, and hope for healing. 
with all that you are and all you will become wherever you are and at whatever time you are joining in, you are welcome to feast at this table with all the saints and receive the grace Jesus gives in this holy meal. Please join with me in a moment of silent prayer, confessing and giving our brokenness to God. Hear the good news. Jesus knows us, loves us, and saves us, already dying and rising for us, in powerful proof of God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We're going to continue now with our prayers of thanksgiving, and uh, we invite you to join aloud in the first responsive prayer as the words will be up on your screen. We'll also have um, a time of silence and a video remembrance and celebration of our saints that'll be a part of these prayers. Again, bring your bread and your baked good, your cracker, whatever you have, and your juice close, and let's continue in our prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for creating the gift of life. We thank you for the life and ministry of Jesus and for the sustaining work of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the faithful living of saints for all centuries. We thank you for the witness of those who gave their lives in your service. In the presence of this cloud of witnesses, we gather around your table, giving thanks for all of these saints and for those we name in our hearts and in the comments. loving God, receive the prayers of our hearts for our world, our community, and ourselves. For all who are sick and suffering, give your healing. For all who are struggling with work, lack of work, or financial instability, show a way forward. For all who are on the front lines of health care, give your courage. For all who struggle with depression, with addiction, or with anxiety, give help and peace. For our nation in this season of elections, of unrest, and of reckoning with our racism past and present, give your powerful direction and transformation. We thank you for the celebrations, healing, blessings, and joy that you give in ways large and small every day. 
Merciful God, we love you, trust you, and give ourselves to you. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus gathered with his disciples for the Passover meal. He blessed and broke the bread, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We remember that in the same way Jesus took the cup after supper and looked forward to your reign saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. I invite you to raise your hands up over your bread and cup and let's pray together for the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered in many places and times and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. You can lower your hand. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet table with all of your saints in glory. For all glory and honor and power are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Please join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that we eat and drink are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and changing us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your piece of bread, eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you and for the world. And I invite you to pick up your cup, drink and experience that this is Jesus's love for you and for the world. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us through the bread and cup. Send us from this meal in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join me in our final hymn, Lord Whose Love Through Humble Service. Oh, my.
Thank you so much for joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for online worship on this very special day of celebration with service and with all saints. I pray that this experience has been inspiring for you, has been meaningful and powerful, that you will continue to connect with us so that we can be with you on this walk of faith. We love you. We, of course, miss getting to see everyone in person, but we are so glad that we can be together and support one another and worship in these ways that are safe and healthy for all people and for our community. Please continue to connect with us so that we can be a part of this important part of your life. As you go into your day, Go knowing that God surrounds you completely in love, that Jesus Christ calls you forward into service for others, and that we are tied together by the Holy Spirit with the communion of saints now and yesterday and tomorrow and every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Amen.